Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Universal Studios Orlando and this is the first time I've been back in the park for the year 2022. So I wanted to come out and ride some rides, eat some food, show you guys some of the things I'm excited for here in the new year and just have an amazing Universal Studios kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. We're gonna start off our day here at Islands of Adventure because we have reservations at the recently awarded World's Best Theme Park Restaurant and then we're gonna hop over to Universal Studios side a little bit later on. Another year has closed and Mythos have been awarded the World's Best theme park restaurant again from theme park insider now this is 10 years that they actually won this award and i have eaten here before so i wanted to come out and see if it actually holds up to that title and try some new things instead of the things i've gotten before and uh yeah just enjoy a nice little lunch Starting off the year 2022, there's a lot of attractions that's going to be closing and some of them are closing for good at the Universal Studios Orlando Resort. Over here at Islands of Adventure, the Carasusol is actually still down and I think that's the only thing that's closed on this side. A couple over on Universal side that we'll talk about a little bit later on. Recently, Universal Studios started requiring guests to actually wear face coverings indoors and at all attractions again. They went away from it a little bit, but because of the rise in cases, they decided to actually bring it back. So because I'm wearing my Roosevelt Jurassic Park shirt, I decided to get the mask that actually ma like matches it. Look at this. I feel kind of fancy. Perfect! Let's take a look at the wait times as Hulk blast off there. And it looks like it's not a busy day at all. I seen Hagrid's was 85 minutes, Jurassic Park 20 minutes, the Hogwarts Express 45 minutes, and Velocicoaster is only 35 minutes. That's pretty amazing. It's fun to see Hagrid still have a higher wait time to Velocicoaster. I think that has more to do with the uh, loading and unloading process because Velocicoaster is very quick and efficient and I think it's m more of the popular attraction. I mean Hagrid's is like a very popular attraction but I think a lot of people go to Velocicoaster before Hagrid's and it's still a lower wait time. In fact, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to make our way right up there to uh, Velocicoaster or Hagrid's. Or I wouldn't mind riding Forbidden Journey today. I love coming to Universal and just riding rides. I just can't show a lot of them on camera, but I do have some stock footage that I can show some of the rides, like ride POVs, and that way you can at least see what we're riding. It's a smart move to ride some of the thrill rides before you actually go eat. You know what I mean? You don't want to go ride thrill rides after you have lunch. And I'm excited to eat at those. Last time I had their signature lamb burger and their uh, beef medallions and it was phenomenal. And I really did like the food, but this time I want to try maybe some different items. I love walking past Dudley Do-Right and smelling the water. It is such a great smell. And it's a fun ride too, but I don't want to get wet today. Now I started thinking, since we're walking through Jurassic Park and I'm wearing my Jurassic Park shirt, maybe we should stop and see Blue. She's probably out meeting and greeting and the line shouldn't be that long. And uh, I think she's actually on my shirt right here. Look at that. It sounds like she's out at the moment and it's a 25 minute wait time. I think we're gonna do it. We're going in. Right now, over in Disney, they don't require you to wear any mask and any outdoor attractions. But here at Universal, every attraction in every single queue, even though we're going to go meet Blue and she's outside, we still need to wear our mask while we are in the queue. I'm right about the size of the food she wants to eat. She's going to be so excited to meet you. Also, Tiana, it's going to be a bloodbath, so get them up. I was next in line and Blue actually had to take a break. They said she had to go take a break and go eat a child. They said that actually. So I'm next in line and they also told me that when I get up there, when you get your photo, you can take your mask off. So wear your mask while you're right here in the queue and then you don't have to wear your mask when you're taking your photo there. Hi guys, in just a few minutes, you're gonna be coming face to face with Bravo, our two-year-old female raptor. If you have any meat in your bag or backpack, now is the time to get rid of it by giving it to the most annoying family member of your group or party. If you're a parent of multiple children, go ahead, take the time, decide which one is your favorite. That's the one you want to hold the tightest if the raptor starts attacking. Raptor. Perimeter fence line. Active. Extreme caution. When we go to meet the raptor, we're going to put our backs towards the wall. Stand right 
right on this line, she is going to see direct eye contact as a form of aggression. Also, please, no touching. She will see that as a form of aggression as well. And any basic talking or breathing, she is going to see as a sign of aggression. Bravo! Jurassic World is now proud to present the Mongoliensis, known to the world as Velociraptor. and yellow line all alone. All alone. What a coincidence. Yes. I'm all alone as well. <laughs> oh, what fancy. Very oh, what attractive. Under <laughs> the face covering. Oh. I do have to stay three feet away from you, though. It's a it's safety okay. thing. I Not have to stay three COVID, feet. It's because of a restraining order. <laughs> Look right over at that camera. Easy, Bravo. I love your t-shirt. That's awesome. I was excited to see Blue. Yes, I know. I'm glad you got to see her for a second. Yeah, this but is Bravo. I she's like, the worst. I'll tell you oh, she's the worst. That's okay. Good. Completely <laughs> untrained. Turn around. You can say goodbye to her. Bye, Bravo. Oh. Stop. <laughs> this is why everyone wants to meet the baby raptor. Just the kidding. baby. No oh, thank you. Well, we didn't get to meet Blue, but we did get to meet Bravo, and it was fun. I love it. It's such a cool experience. There were some kids actually in line crying, like, to meet Blue. And I would love that for me growing up. Like, if I was able to, like, have a frightening experience and remember it, and then being like, I can't believe I was so afraid then. I think that's something, like, that's a memory, you know? I feel like that's the same thing for, like, Jaws and King Kong. We're going to jump from Jurassic Park over to Hogsmeade. It's funny because you can still hear like the Jurassic Park music as you're walking into Hogsmeade and then you just get around the corner here and you have like that big beautiful grand review, review, grand reveal of the Hogwarts castle and I just love it every time I come over here. Look at that. Since we're over here though, I think we're gonna go ride Hagrid's. I love it. I love Hagrid's. It is one of my all-time favorite rides. And I even like Hagrid's a little bit more than Velocicoaster, mainly because of the theming. The theming on Hagrid's is so cool. Velocicoaster is like 100% like an, the best thrill ride, but I like Hagrid's a little bit better, maybe because I'm a Harry Potter fanatic. Shockingly, it's only a 65 minute wait. Before, when we got in the park, it was 85 minutes, so we definitely saved some time by taking our time to get over here. Now we just have to navigate through here. We have to bob and weave, bob and weave, in between, in between, to the right, to the left. I'm going to have to put the camera along with everything in my pockets in a locker now because you can't film on the ride. But like I said, I do have some POV footage that a friend lets me use so I can show you. And you guys can see what it's like to ride Hagrid's. And I'm going to go ride it right now. Oh, you found my missing. 
and screws. Best be getting you out of here before you get blasted. Now, hit those purple buttons. amazing i love hagrid but i do want to point out something and i always fall victim to this usually i put the camera and everything in my pockets inside the locker and i always forget about my hat now when you get up there they make you actually take your hat off there's nowhere to put it i'm bald and they make you stuff it in your shirt so like this bulky hat i had to like stuff into my shirt and i was riding like this like it was it was very uncomfortable so if you wear a hat make sure you leave it in the locker because they will not let you actually wear it while you ride even if it doesn't fall off one of the things i'm excited for hopefully in the new year is poseidon's fury to reopen hi how are you Group. Did you see our sign? Oh, I see it now. I just discovered it. You did just discover <laughs> What's your book? Is that one of the dummy books? Oh. Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh. Perfect. Everything you need to know right there. Buddy, it really is helping me out. <laughs> How awesome were those tailors? And there's no set day for Poseidon's Fury to actually reopen, but I'm hoping that it'll open soon. I wanna see everything open. It's not so much like I wanna go do the attraction. I just wanna see everything being open in the parks. That's what I'm looking forward to most for 2022. And now it is officially time for dinner at the world's best theme park restaurant. I am so excited. Look, it's even got the banner right there, and this banner's been here forever. Awarded World's Best Theme Park Restaurant by Theme Park Insider. And we're gonna give you all of the information about Theme Park Insider when we get inside. Our table is ready, and now I wanna show you the inside of the restaurant because it is a beautiful restaurant. This restaurant is so beautiful. And it is voted the world's best theme park restaurant, but I could tell you, I really believe it's probably one of the nicest looking restaurants. It is absolutely amazing in here. Everything is just full of detail, from the chairs to the boots to the waterfalls. And then they even have an outdoor seating area that is remarkable. Let's see if you can see right here. I wanted to sit outside so I can stare at like the, the roller coasters because it's a beautiful day out, but I think they stopped serving out there. So right now we're right next to the window. So it's actually really nicely lit in here. And uh, I think we're gonna look over the menu. Let's take a look at the menu here. And I have to say the price point is so really amazing. It's a very affordable restaurant for being in a theme park. And they've got some good starters. They've got a Mediterranean grilled octopus, which I think I'm gonna actually try. I'm gonna be a little adventurous. They've got calamari, grilled lamb, meatballs, lemon hummus. And then for entrees, uh, basically every entree is in the $20 price range. Some of them are a little bit over. I think the highest, uh, the most expensive entree is the braised lamb shank for $30. So that is very affordable. And they have uh, a brick oven roasted chicken. They've got a spinach and ricotta ravioli. They've got a 12 ounce bone-in pork chop and some pad thai. Last time I was here, I got the beef medallions and that's $26. This time, I think I'm gonna go all in on the 12 ounce bone-in pork chop. Earlier I was talking about how it's an award-winning restaurant and it's won best theme park restaurant in the world by Theme Park Insider and I actually looked up Theme Park Insider and it's a real like vlog and they do vote for things so it is the winner this year and uh, it has won 10 times. 10 times! Now this is just one like award from one single place but it's still kind of a cool thing to say. And here is our Mediterranean grilled octopus. Look at this. It is a citrus charred octopus, roasted corn, a olive relish, and a garlic lime aioli. And look at that. I mean, this is a big, big tentacle. It actually comes all the way down here, and I can smell the char on there. Like, I can really, really smell the char from here, and I'm excited to dive in. It looks so, so good. I'm, I'm excited for this. I think we'll start right over here. Get a nice little cut. Perfect. 
Here we go. I got a little bit of that aioli on there, and now I'm gonna try it. Wow. That is amazing. Like, no lie, that is amazing. Who would have known? Look. The strongest things I can taste is a citrus char. Like, I can really taste like that char and the citrus, and it actually all hits you really good, and the texture is phenomenal. This is such a good starter, and I've only had octopus maybe twice, and this is the best octopus I've ever had. Like, I would order this again anytime, and now I'm excited to try more octopus. You know what I mean? This kind of set us a high standard, or it raised the bar on octopus for me. I am still really shocked at how amazing this octopus is. And now I gotta grab some of this corn on there. Yeah, I gotta get a little bit of the corn, got a little bit of the aioli, a little bit of everything right there. And now it's time for the main course. Here is the 12 ounce bone-in pork chop, and it comes with a blue cheese cranberry crust, lemon garlic fingerling potatoes, a corn succotash, and an apple brandy reduction. And I'm excited to try the apple brandy reduction. That looks so, so good. And the succotash looks pretty well. The portion size is good. I mean, this is, this looks very, really fancy. I'm, I'm excited to try it. This is something I haven't tried before. We're gonna cut right on in here and grab ourselves a nice piece. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. can you see the steam coming off of it? That looks so, so good. I got lots of the apple brandy reduction on there because I love pork chops and applesauce. So this is gonna be good. I'm excited to try it. Wow. The pork chop itself is phenomenal. It is so, so good. And the best meat is when you get it close to the bone. And now I wanna try a little bit of the succotash. Get a little of the succotash on there. Now this is a big deciding factor because I believe in Disney or in another theme park, this would cost probably $50. $50 for this. Here, it is $26. $26. And it is so good. So when you're paying, when you're paying a lot of money for food, your expectation is really high. $26 is not that bad. And it, my, my expectation is like higher because it is good. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's good food, good price. I like it. Now I'm at the point where I'm just picking up the bone and just eating right off of it. <laughs> and it's a good portion size. I still can't get over that it's $26. And there we have it, a nice successful lunch. And it was delicious, it was great. Now, do I think it's the best theme park restaurant in the world? No, I don't think it's the best theme park restaurant in the world, but I can say this, I think it is the best theme park restaurant in Universal Studios. I think that the amazing food atmosphere and just the decor inside is really, really breathtaking, but the prices is what makes it so, so good. You have like this amazing restaurant with low cost and you won't leave disappointed. You won't have that buyer's regret because like if you spend a lot of money, you judge your food a lot more. Here, it kind of takes that away a little bit. Like I said, most of the food items in there at Disney would cost like $50. So you definitely have like that feeling like, oh, well this is affordable and it's good. And I kind of like that. I like it a lot. Now we're gonna actually head on over to Universal Studios. It is just about four o'clock and my Express Pass should start working now. And we're gonna be able to take the Hogwarts Express over to uh, Universal Studios. There's two ways you can, you know, park hop. You can take the Hogwarts Express, which is over here. It's kind of like an attraction. In fact, it is an attraction. Or you can walk over. I think I'd rather ride the Hogwarts Express. Hogsmeade to London's King's Cross Station. And like I said, we get to use the Express because I am a premier Universal Orlando annual pass holder. So lucky me, but the wait time is only 25 minutes anyway. And there's the Hogwarts Express now pulling in. Next stop, King's Cross. 
There we go. This will take us right on over to Universal Studios. You know, look inside the cabins there. There we go. I'm gonna put my hat up here. There we go. <laughs> and we made it. And now we are in Universal Studios. It took a little bit for us to get uh, from Islands to Universal with the Hogwarts Express. Your best bet is always to walk. That is going to be the fastest. And uh, I don't film on Hogwarts Express. And this time I really didn't want to film because you're inside a cabin with like another family. So you don't want to be like just like, you know, recording everything, especially with them in there. And uh, now we're going to explore around Universal Studios. The parks look like they're closing early in the month of January. Uh, it looks like it's 7 o'clock for here and Islands of Adventure. And I just think closing a theme park at 7 o'clock really doesn't make much sense. Like, people would probably hang out here until 1 in the morning if you'd let them. Earlier in the video, I was talking about attractions actually closing. And over on Universal side, Shrek 4D is actually closing down for good. And I think that's happening just in a couple days. And The Mummy is currently closed right now for a long refurbishment. Like, I don't think it's coming back until summer. So if you plan on coming to Universal in 2022 and you like to ride The Mummy, uh, if it's any time before summer, it's not going to be open. As you can see, the walls are up and it is all currently closed. Revenge of the Mummy is currently closed for scheduled maintenance, reopening late summer 2022. I like how they have all the mummy like old school posters here. 1940, 1954 for the creature from the Black Lagoon, 2008 for the mummy. Like this is really awesome that they actually keep the outside themed a little bit, but I do miss that ride. It was one of my favorites. So hopefully they don't change it too much. I kind of would like it to stay the same way. Another awesome thing that we can look forward to here at Universal Studios for 2022 is more tribute stores. Right here, I think 2021 was the best year with tribute stores and I loved every single one of them. So I'm excited to see what new stores are gonna be in 2022. I'm also excited for all the seasonal offerings for 2022. Halloween Horror Nights, of course, Mardi Gras. Uh, there's a lot to actually come. I think Mardi Gras starts uh, February 5th maybe here. I'm not too sure, but it's always a good time. Like, it's one of my favorite things. And hopefully that like, it's back in full scale. Like the parade floats and the bead tossing. I'd be so happy if that's the case. And like I said before, Shrek 4D is going to be closing down soon. And there's a lot of upset people about it. There's some hardcore Shrek fans out there. I'll tell you that. Like some people that are dedicated to Shrek. And uh, yeah, they're going to be sad when it happens. Oh, speaking about one of those hardcore sad, Shrek fans. Very sad. You're very when sad. Goes away. Yep. Look at you. You coming to say goodbye? Yeah. I yeah. Did. I did a little early, but. Wow. Ah, <laughs> this is my friend Vincent Vision. Hey. Yeah. Are you so excited? What are you making? All Shrek video? All Shrek video. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I see. I like it. Actually. I thought maybe you were a part of the parade. The five o'clock parade. Oh, I hope not. Yeah, you, I you could be. Could join. Yeah, nice. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see the video. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, be pumped. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll so be fun. sad to say goodbye, Shrek. <laughs> Vincent is dedicated. Wow. I can't even believe it. Now, since we've kind of met Shrek, I think we'll go meet Donkey. <laughs> Hello, Donkey. Hello there, sir. Hello, how are you? I just seen a Shrek impersonator. Oh, you better stop it. Yes, I know. I've seen this guy. He's, Did you see him? Around. Yes. I think he's been over here a while. I think he's been doing a good job, too. Yeah, he looks pretty you good. Know, officially, our attraction closes Sunday. Oh, yes. Yes, that, that's it. I wish I would have known. I would have loved to be a donkey impersonator. Oh, my goodness. I think I could have done it. Would. That would have been great. I could have done it. We, I feel... we could have talked for hours. And, and we look like each other, kind of. And yeah, we, we would. Yeah, we I'm do. We, you know, we just we over play the waffles and then just sit down and chitty chat. I love waffles. I love. Oh no! <laughs> what are the odds? Crazy. I love waffles. What are the odds indeed oh. that we like? What, what do you like on your waffles? Uh, I like syrup and strawberries. Ooh, syrup and strawberries. You, you ever throw a blueberry in there? Oh just no! Maybe. Maybe, oh, maybe I maybe I should cold, do that. Little cold blueberry cold. waffles. Slice banana. Just 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 put that right in the spot. Wow! Just, no. I'm just telling you. Well, now I know. Now when, I know. Now you know. <laughs> when, when you, when you want to just, you know, feel froggy. Feel froggy or donkey. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. When I want to feel donkey. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, thank you, donkey. Have well, fun. See ya. Sir. See you all later. 
donkey is so fun. And I love the fact that we've been actually seeing a lot of characters here at Universal Studios. We saw Bravo over at Islands of Adventure. We saw Donkey here. We've seen Vincent's, we seen Vincent's version of Shrek. And now I think we're gonna do something a little bit scarier and uh, have a meet and greet with Megatron. Uh-oh, sound the alarms. Megatron is on his way. Oh, my turn. I just want a photo of Megatron if I could. Just like of you. You're a very poseable character. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Have a great day, sir. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Megatron is intimidating. Like, he really is. He's a scary, scary character. I'm sure more people are afraid of Megatron, or more kids are afraid of Megatron than they are Bravo or Blue. I would think so. I mean, Megatron just looks like something that could be in your nightmares. It also looks like it's just about time for the 5 o'clock Superstar Parade. So I think we'll find a spot and watch it. It comes out right here. In fact, I could see the Superstar float like kind of hanging out behind the door there. So any second now. I definitely want to grab a butterbeer before we leave Universal Studios. And I kind of found a good spot to watch the uh, Superstar Parade right here. It's actually uh, not formally a spot, but it will be a spot very soon. All of the parades come out here in Hollywood and then they close down the road and then it actually goes all the way around and then to the front of the park. So if you stand right here in the middle of the road, eventually they're gonna take this rope and bring it right across and you're gonna have front row viewing. So you just gotta come here just a couple minutes early and bada bing bada boom. SpongeBob and Squidward. Oh, ho, 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 ho. hey, uh, SpongeBob. parade i love seeing spongebob going about in his boat and uh, also the minions I'm not the biggest minions fan though i have to tell you but i do love spongebob and it was a nice little five o'clock parade you know up next i think we're gonna head on over and we gotta do et i love et and it's probably my favorite attraction at universal studios i really love it it's a classic and uh i love the smell of it so i think we're definitely gonna go ride it express pass it up Probably don't have to wait at all. The mystery, the suspense, the adventure. E.T. Adventure. Even though this attraction is a very old attraction, it still has one of the best cues out of any theme park ride. It is so immersive once the adventure begins. I love it, and, I, and I, like I said, the smell is iconic. Look at how awesome this is. We're in a queue right now waiting to actually go on a ride 
and it's like we're in the forest. always just gives me the cool vibes like I love it. it gives me such a great feeling being here and riding that the sun is starting to set and it's the golden hour and it makes everything look like kind of amazing look at lard lad donuts right here the way the sun is actually hitting the donut I love it I think that is so cool seriously look at it doesn't it look so pretty I love it I wish I could sit up there inside the donut kind of like uh, Iron Man did That'd be very, very cool. That'd be a good photo. I think we're just gonna keep moving right through Springfield so that way we can actually make it over to Dogon Alley to get ourselves a butterbeer and maybe catch a butterbeer and a sunset together. I think that would be really nice. Butterbeers on a sunset. Sounds poetic. Seriously, look at how beautiful it is out right now. Oh, I love it. Sometimes you just gotta stop and take in your surroundings because it is just so amazing. Every couple months I actually have a phase where I start re-watching all the Harry Potters. And actually, I say this like every couple months, like right now I am on, I think, Goblet of Fire, which is one of my favorite of all the Harry Potter movies. And uh, now it gets me more excited to actually come home and like watch more. Time to head on in and get ourselves our butterbeer. So we're going in. Looks like hot butter beer is still on the menu, and that is my favorite. So we're gonna get ourselves a hot butter beer and uh, just enjoy hanging out. That first sip of butter beer moment here. Oh, it is so amazing. It is so good. Hot butter beer, I used to not be a fan, but ever since the Orlando Informer, where you get like endless amounts of butterbeer like you can drink as much butterbeer as you want when you buy a ticket to the Orlando Informer and ever since then I have just loved hot butterbeer <laughs> well this is a really awesome story I was standing here actually trying to wait to see if I can catch the dragon breathe fire and somebody came up and kind of like shoulder checked me and I ended up like spilling a lot of my hot butter beer and a TM actually gave me another butter beer. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? I was like, oh, well, thank you. So a little magic here in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, and I like it. 
So now we actually just get to sit here, watch the sunset happen, and enjoy a hot butter beer. Mm. So beautiful out. These are the moments I just love. <laughs> just sitting here and relaxing, enjoying Universal Studios during the sunset. And I guess with that, we're gonna call it a day. I had a lot of fun hanging out here. Mythos was really, really good. We got to see a lot of awesome characters. And I just had a lovely Universal Studios day. A great way to kick off 2022. I'm gonna be here like probably next month. I come out to Universal, I would say, once a month, I would say. Sometimes two or three times. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. There's a helicopter flying over us, and we'll see you next time. Bye!